All right. So back for another section here. Um, we left off talking about significant figures and how to get to them. And so the next thing we want to look at are some problems and then how to do some calculations using our sig figs. So some of the problems we'll run into. Uh, what if 50 is only one significant figure, right? But I need it to be more. Um, if it really is two significant figures, if I want that zero to count as a significant figure, what can I do? What are the ways that I can make it count so that when you read it, you also know that it counts? So a zero at the end only counts, remember, if it's after a decimal place. So what I'm going to introduce to you is scientific notation. And I'm sure you've seen this before, but again, just want to make sure you have all the tools you need in your toolbox. And so scientific notation is going to take that um, 50 and turn it into 5.0. And so now we have 5.20, but of course 50 and 5 are not the same thing, right? If I had $50, I wouldn't walk around saying I got 5 bucks. Um, so what we're going to do is then put a power of 10, and then of course however many times we move the decimal point, that's going to tell us the exponent for that power of 10. In this case, we made um, the decimal point move over one place, and so we're going to have times 10 to the 1. And of course, now because that zero follows a decimal point, it's a significant figure. And so now that zero counts, right? Um, I'll probably post uh, some other things up here for you, uh, some assignments. I won't call them assignments. We'll call them uh, practice sets. Um, I mean, this could show up in an assignment. So you do want to make sure you are practiced it and you understand what you're doing with it. But you're going to need to be able to take a number into scientific notation and again, move it back out of scientific notation. Um, when I present it, I typically like to say that you're making a big number small or a small number big, rather than saying we're moving the decimal point left or right. Um, the left and right can sometimes be confusing. Are we talking about expanding in from scientific notation? Or are we talking about collapsing it back into scientific notation? Um, so again, I'll usually say if I'm trying to make a big number small, then the exponent's got to go up to counter that. And if I'm making a small number big, then again, the exponent's going to have to go negative in order to counter that. Um, and we'll see some examples of that soon. All right, so let's do some math with our significant figures. So adding and subtracting with significant figures is probably going to be one of the toughest concepts to really get your mind wrapped around when it comes to significant figures. Now, when we look at significant figures, we have to go all the way back to that very first section when we talked about what they mean. And what a significant figure is telling us is how good a measurement actually is. And it's based on that estimate. So the last sig fig in a measurement is that estimate. Now, if I take two measurements and I add them or subtract them together, the answer between those two can be no better than my worst estimate. Now, that just sounds crazy. Um, and so if it doesn't make sense, I understand that. But basically what I'm saying is this. If I'm going to measure two different tables and then add those numbers together, and in doing so, I use two different instruments to make those measurements. Now remember, significant figures talk about how good the number is, and the instrument limits how good that number can be. So if I use two different instruments, one better than the other, then it's going to produce a better measurement. Now when I sum them together, what the statement is saying is that I can only be as good as that bad instrument, right? I couldn't, shouldn't call it a bad instrument, the instrument that's not as good as the other instrument, okay? Now, what we'll do after that is simply do some rounding. And we'll just follow basic rounding rules. I'm sure you've seen them before, but again, I'll cover them here just to make sure. Now, a lot of times when I give you these concepts and we're just talking about these things, it's a little harder to understand, but when we see an application play out, then it's not so bad. So let's give it a try. So here we have 27.93 plus 6.4. Now again, the first thing we want to do is make sure the units are the exact same units. In other words, if I'm adding kilometers with miles, that's not going to add up well. What I need to do is convert one of those. We're going to talk about conversions a little later in this PowerPoint. So, and maybe not this chunk of PowerPoint, but within this set of PowerPoints. Um, here, we're just going to assume the unit is the same because, again, I don't want to focus on units yet. I want to just focus on the application. So the first thing we're going to do is just like when we were back in grade school, we're simply going to add those two numbers up by lining up the decimal points. So there we go. Next, we're going to do the adding itself. 
So we'll drop the 3 down. 9 plus 4 gives me 13. Carry the 1. 7 plus 6. Yada. We're there. 34.33. Right? Now what I want to do is figure out the estimate in the problem. So I'm going to look at each value. 27.93. Which number is my estimate? And again, that would be the 3, because it's the last significant figure, or the significant figure, if you prefer, to the right. Okay. Now for 6.4, it's the 4. Now again, we have to flash back and think about place. What place is the 3 in? Right, it's in the hundredths place. And what about the 4? Well, the 4 is in the tenths place. So when I add these up, what we're saying is that the value can be no better than the worst estimate which we just said was the, the tenths place so that means i'm going to have to cut this number so that it ends in the tenths place so 34.33 is now going to be rounded right by looking at the three and the four as the estimates we said that the worst estimate was going to be the four which means my value then has to stop in the tenths place as well so that means i'm going to round and i'm going to use the second three here to round the first three. Now we might remember anything below five means we stay the same. So that means this answer is going to be rounded to 34.3. Now if you don't understand rounding, you know, I'll give you a quick rundown on it. If you do understand rounding, then you might want to just go ahead and breeze through this a little bit quickly, maybe speed it up on the timer. Your rounding rules. What we're going to do is look at the number behind the one we're looking to round. If it's between 0 and 4, then we don't change. However, if it's between 5 and 9, then we'll make it 1 larger. So, let's take a couple of examples here. I'm going to take a calculator value, 45.462, and I want to round that to four significant figures. I'm always going to start at the left. So I'm going to take the 4 and the 5, then the 0.46, that's going to be my four values I get for my four significant figures. Now I want to look at what the 2 is going to do to the 6, and it does nothing. So my final answer then is going to be 45.46. Now, what about to 3 sig figs? Well, if I'm looking at 3 sig figs, again, I'm starting with this first calculator number, 45.462. So I'm going to get the 4 and the 5, and then the 4. Now what I'm going to do is look at what the 6 will do to the 4, and it's going to round it up. So if I want the same calculator value to be rounded to 3 sig figs, then it's going to be 45.5. All right, so far so good. All right. Next, I want to do it to 2 sig figs. Well, I'm going to start with 45.462 again. I get two sig figs, so I'm going to take the four and the five, and then I'm going to look at what was the four going to do to the five. Well, it does nothing. So that means that to two sig figs, this value will be 45. Now, some of you are looking at that going, no, 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 but what about that six? Right, remember that six doesn't matter because we're only looking at the number after the place we're looking to round. So we're looking to round in the ones place, then we're going to look at the tenth. And we only go by that value. doesn't matter what comes after it. We only worry about what is in that place after the one we're looking to round. All right, last but not least, what if I wanted one sig fig? All right, so I have 45.462 to one sig fig is going to be 50. How many people said five? Yeah, five, it's a trick question, right? We'll say five because we take the four, we look at what the five does, it rounds it up to five, but remember, we're going to have to put a zero in to hold that place to where the decimal is. And so the answer here would be 50. A lot of times the trick here is to think about money. If you had $45, you wouldn't say you have about five. You'd say you have about 50. All right. So watch out for that. Very common mistake. All right. So here I'm going to give you some practice problems. So we'll take 4.8 plus 6.8765. And again, we'll line that decimal point up. We'll get the calculator answer, and then we'll look at the final answer. So again, here the eight stops in the tenths place. This one goes well beyond to the ten ten thousandths place. We have to stop at the tenths place, which means our final answer then will be 
11.7. All right. So here's a few more problems. Go ahead and list those out. And I'll put together a second PowerPoint here that you can come take a look at when you want to see the answers to this, as well as a sheet where it's worked out for you. I won't spend time in this PowerPoint going through each one of these. Um, but again, take a look at it. Um, I'll print it out as a sheet. I'll work the problems out. I'll put it up um, in a document format, as well as a slideshow where I can work through them individually. All right. So that moves us to multiplication and division. The rule here is going to be much simpler. And great news, this is the rule we'll be using the majority of the time. The same number of sig figs and the answer is the least in the question. So you don't have to worry about place anymore. Now we're just going to worry about how many sig figs are in each value. So for instance, I'm going to take 3.6 times 653. If I run that through my calculator, I get 2350.8. All right, so now we just simply say, okay, well, the 3.6 has two significant figures, and the 653 has three significant figures. So which number is smaller, two or three? And of course, you're going to say two, and so the answer then can only have two significant figures. And so that means we'll apply that to that calculator answer. We'll take the two and the three. We look at what the five does to the three. It's going to round it up. And so our final value then would be 2,400. All right, so for multiplication and division, same rules, practice, here we go. Boom, 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 boom. And just like with the addition, I'll go back, I'll do these problems, and then put it together as a document as well as a second PowerPoint. All right, so we're gonna stop there because our next topic that we're gonna get into is gonna be the metric system. So we'll break this into yet another chunk for you. All right, take yourself a little break.